everyone. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update on our electrical. Unfortunately, we don't have our solar panels. Oh, hey, Linus. Do you, do you need to help? Come on up here then. Okay. Well, apparently, apparently Linus is going to help us out here. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Big helper. Um, so... Yeah, they're still settling in. They're a little, still a little anxious, so he likes being around you. Anyway, back to the electrical. Um, relax, Neptune. So this all needs to be tidied up as, as per before. Um, and I just did a test on the induction burner, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the inverter back off. Here we've got the main power coming out of the inverter. Um, and that's going to a house panel once we get I've got all the wiring for the solar panels as soon as we get the new rear pulpit from the fabricators We'll be able to get that in that's the very last piece that we've got So our line out actually comes over here If I can crawl out of here Again big person little space and I've got a dog helping <laughs> Okay, so here, I know that this is incorrect. I know this is just a standard house panel. Um, I just wasn't happy with anything that I found for marine panels, so we will upgrade this when we get to Florida once I find something that I'm happy with. And we do have a cover for this. I left it off because I wanted to show you. This is, it's kind of hard to see, but it's just a standard home panel. And we decided for our trip to Florida that we're actually only going to have one outlet, one 110 outlet on the boat. So um, we've got, there is a little bit of confusion on this, tying AC and DC systems together. So um, I've got the main ground in here uh, actually runs back for my grounding bar up there actually it's got this green wire attached to it that runs all of the way back to our negative bus bar our negative DC bus bar that's what it, everyone said to do and that's how it has it online and it doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense to me and also I had the neutral uh, grounded back to the DC negative as well but I've had a lot of people tell me that's not right and I've had a lot of people tell me that's right so I'm a little confused on that right now intuitively it doesn't make sense to me but I like I've said for the millionth time I'm not an electrician so I decided to not um, hook that up right now uh, if we got yeah so anyway then we've got our line coming out and that actually just goes to a GFI here that we've temporarily mounted underneath the stairs. So for now, for our trip to Florida, because we just kind of have to get going for our stove tops and stuff, we're just going to run it off of here. And this is just a standard GFI, and it does the ground fault does work. We've tested it, um, and all of the systems work. So we didn't really um, change the system a ton since the previous video. But I am going to tack on, I did a test of our induction cookstop, so I'll add that to this video as well in case anyone else is um, thinking about going this route. And we also have our battery monitor in place, and that couples with the app which I go over in the stove top test. And it's, it's a pretty cool system, so alrighty. And I'll get the solar panel update when we get that far. Um, and we'll go from there. All right. Hey everyone, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to test our induction stove. This is actually the second time we did it. The first time I figured out back here on our power system, this thing here is called a shunt right here. And that has a specific orientation, which I did not know. And that actually measures um, the battery uh, percentages and the power consumption and that kind of stuff. So I've got that fixed. So let's go ahead and take a look at 
or Victron amp, or uh, app. And Neptune's being kind of whiny. Are you okay, buddy? Are you okay, big guy? Yeah, are you okay? Do you guys need something? Do you want to chew on this one for a while? Do you want to chew on that one? Okay, there you go. Okay, do you want to chew on Neptune's? There you go. Sometimes swapping treats does the trick. Okay, so sorry about that. Let's get back to this. So right now we're at negative 11.8 amp hours. And we've got a little bit of draw going on. There's um, a light turned on back here and some other stuff. Actually, let me turn that off so we can get this down to a minimum. Um, okay, so that's a pretty low draw. We're only drawing 32 watts right now. And we've got negative 11.8 amp hours. So that'll drop as we boil our water. So let's go ahead and get the water in here. So this is just over a pint of water. It is 1.05 pints, so basically a pint of water. And let's get a timer going just to time this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer. And then I'm gonna turn this guy on. And let's crank our temp up. Let's go 390. And let's see what that did to our power draw here coming from our system. And it's reconnecting. So you'll see our wattage has jumped up quite a bit. Um, we're at 1105 watts, negative 12.3 amp hours. So it's, um, it's dropping pretty quick. And sorry about the noise, the dogs are chewing on their chewing on their treats. So this is getting fired up and we've already got some bubbles forming on the bottom of our pan here, which is good. I've got this set to 390 and that's drawing about 1100 watts. These induction burners are 1600 watts, um, so the temperature can definitely go higher. We do only have a 3000 watt inverter, so we couldn't actually run both of our induction cooktops at full power, but we could run them um, you know, lower than that if we needed to. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes this to boil. So we're still drawing around 1100 watts. We're up to negative 14 amp hours. I believe we were at 11.8 when we started. Definitely heating up. We're up to negative fourteen point nine amp hours. pulling 85 amps right now which is not too bad and while this is heating up we can actually go through some of these settings on this Victron app if anyone's thinking about maybe doing something similar this is pretty cool it shows all of your your voltage draw, your amp draw, and um, your wattage and your power for your battery bank. Um, there is a history function that shows all of your historical information. We don't have much in there yet because we're just starting out. And also there are trends so you can see your, your power consumption, um, which is pretty nice. It gives you your total, your voltage and current, so that's pretty neat.
So we're pulling consistent 1100 watts, 85 ish amps, and 16, negative 17 amp hours now. So let's take a look here. And our water is definitely, uh, our surface definitely has some uh, activity going to it. There's a lot of little bubbles forming around here. I don't have a thermometer. I'm not exactly sure when you would say it's boiling, but um, it's, it's definitely close. Boy, that thing makes more noise than I would have expected. It's interesting. I've never used an induction stove before, so this is kind of all new. Yeah, it's definitely boiling now. It's not a violent boil or a rolling boil, but the bubbles are definitely popping off, so it's, if it's not technically boiling, it's right on the edge. Um, so let's take a look. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look at our timer. Whoops. Oh, come on. So we're at about five, just over five minutes. So I'd say it took approximately five minutes to boil. I'm gonna shut this off. It's definitely going now. So maybe five minutes, 15 seconds, somewhere in there. So we're at negative 19.2 amp hours. And I believe we were at 11.8 when we started. So that's what, like 8.4? I hope my math is right. <laughs> uh, 8.4 amp hours to boil a pint of water. Um, I don't know if that's good or not. Electricity, like I've said many times, is magic to me. Um, but that doesn't have a very big impact on our um, our bank. You know, we've got 800 amp hours just in that lithium iron phosphate bank. Um, so we could boil like a hundred pints of water before we were out. It'll be interesting when we do get the solar panels to see what kind of power goes back in and what it takes to recover those lost amp hours due to cooking. So that pretty much ends that demo. Hopefully that was interesting for someone and we'll catch you later. Okay, and just one other thing about the... Um, the electrical system we've decided to go redundant on everything um, at least for this first trip for sure so the original setup in here was lead acid there are lead acid batteries behind this these doors here above the engine compartment down here there's another one and then up front for the windlass there's actually another um, battery as well so there's a total of five lead acid batteries and that system we're going to bring with us. We're just going to keep it running. So the lead acids will actually run the engine starter and the windlass. And those that system will be recharged off of the alternator on the diesel. And then our lithium iron phosphate system, we're actually going to have charged off of the solar. So just in case one system, if our new system doesn't perform like we think it will, or if we run into issues as we go, there's just one line, which is um, this, you know, you can't see it, but it was the old house panel line that went from the lead acid into the house panel. So that line, we would just have to reconnect at the house panel and then we'd be good to go. We'd have full functionality again. So we decided to leave that redundant redundancy in place um, just to kind of stress test the new system and make sure it operates the way we want it to. And also, to, so to tie in all of the grounds together, this, uh, the lead acid system is tied in to the lithium iron phosphate system at the house panel. So all those negatives are tied together at the house panel. So literally, if we needed to switch the system, we just have to take off our hot from the lithium and replace it with the lead acid and it'd be plug and play. We'd be good to go. So, and we could do that in a matter of minutes if, if something goes seriously wrong, which 
we don't anticipate but for this first trip i know this is kind of this is out of our comfort zone um, as far as knowledge goes so we just want to make sure everything works correct and same if we lose our electric induction cooktops um, or if our inverter fails or that whole system melts down we are going to bring a propane um, grill up on deck so we can use that as well if we have to and you know we're just going to take the icw down to florida so we will always have um you know we're not going to be it's not like we're going to be out in the middle of the ocean stranded somewhere so we're trying to have as much redundancy as we can and then once we're convinced the new system is going to work the way we want it to or are expecting it to then we'll just go ahead and tie everything together and eliminate um the old system so all righty